Hello and welcome back to a new episode of Brewing Life. This is Publicis Sapiens' own technology chat show. My name is Neha Patak and I'm your host. Have you ever wondered what a good usable interface is like? If you've seen Iron Man the movie, you'd see if you'd remember Tony Stark the way he'd you know pull up designs out of the air and kind of interact with it. It looked very futuristic. But the truth is that a, a good interface is one which is a natural extension of human interaction. Think about communication with devices, but in the absence of an interface. That is the future. That is where technology, context, and data meet human experience. To chat with me today on how zero UI and immersive technologies can change human experience, I have with me Selva Ganapati Kalia Murthy, who is the Director of Technology at Publicis Sapient. He works in the experience technology domain and has over 14 years of experience with UX and UI. So welcome Selva, welcome to the show. I'm really excited to have you here. Hey Neha, nice to be here. So Selva, let's just dive straight in. You know, when you're talking this topic about, you know, zero UI, how is zero UI different from immersive technologies? Okay, so we need to understand what is a zero UI first and then an immersive technology. Im uh, zero UI is a basically, is a natural extension of your body. Basically, right. you wave your hand and what are the actions you get out of that. And probably uh, the, the interface also communicates with you in a very natural way. Maybe right now the smart watches we have, it vibrates and tells you this. So every smart bands you're using it as using this haptic feedback. And immersive technologies are basically which takes you away from this real world and take you to in a different, altogether digital experience. Even in immersive technologies, we have a lot of other divisions as well, where, and VR, where you'll be completely enclosed in a different environment and you interact with that. And in augmented reality, whereas like you will have an objects spanned around you, like a table or a chair, or even a, even a doll around you to talk about it. That take, takes down to a third dimension, which is, a you know, the mixed reality where these objects interacts with you. So now how this uh, zero UI is going to come into this immersive technology? Because this zero UI, using the zero UI, you can able to control your mixed reality environment. Right. So, so it's just an extension of interface, how you interact with the world. With the adoption of all of these technologies, how is our industry changing today? Right, uh, so uh, if you see any of the voice-based uh, you know, assistants, right. like uh, Siri or Google Home, or even Alexa, it, it comes under from a concept called uh, Chinese box, okay. where a translator has not having any idea about a Chinese, we're given a manuals of scripts on Chinese. And there's a person standing outside, give them a receipt. And this person work is to find an equivalent Chinese word and pass it out. So this is a popular uh, thought work experiment, thought process experiment basically. It's been done in 1980 to understand how humans versus computer can outperform it. Right. So if you see there's Alexa or any other voice-based assistants or voice-based UI, um, they follow the same principle. They don't really understand what you really meant, but the data you give it is been and the back end has been processed with high level of uh, you know context into it and written back so in terms of how industry is changing now you can able to book your uber using you know alexa or any voice based assistant right. that's on the consumer front so let's go let's talk about the retail world right so um, without um, there's a change in the season say like a winter or a christmas season with the digital world Right? I can, how do I connect the both digital and the physical experience together and create a VR based or a augmented reality based you know, Christmas decoration around the store. Mm -hmm. so, so the larger part of the front, many companies are going towards it. How do I connect both digital and physical experience? And this is where this zero UI and the immersive experience comes into place. Yeah, like for example, Siri for me never understands my voice. Gives me weird answers all the time. Exactly. So, so it's it's a it's basically because of the black box. Right. 
So, you know, today organizations are in, in the midst of digital transformation, right? Everyone's trying to cope up with digital first players. There is so much of change when you're talking about transformation. You're talking about an entire organization transformation. There's so much of change to cope up with. Now, when you add this to the mix of, you know, immersive experiences and zero UIs, then how, how are the organizations going to cope with this additional change? See, uh, <clears throat> so every organization right now have a data. So um, I know an organization which could able to predict based upon the buying option whether this person is pregnant or not. I'm talking about in late 80s or 90s where no machine learning or technology has been there. So, so considering we have a pool of lake of data, how do you utilize this data for the dark analytics? That's what it matters. As I said, context, artificial intelligence, data, and how you present it to the user. That's where it makes more sense. So let's talk about um, something called predictive thinking. No, right. this this able to think like what user is needed at this point of time, and I'm, whether I'm giving this right approach towards it. That actually equates and solves most of this industry problems. Uh, one typical example um, and thermostat. Right, I want to increase the temperature in the thermostat. Right. When you come to a typical use case of a zero UI technology in this. I can do it in multiple ways, but how the 80% of the people in the world do it, that's what this matters. Probably by rising an ad or reducing the ad yeah. differs. And depending upon the, you know, the location, the country, this rising and reducing may differ from left to right or right to left. Okay. We need to understand which context we are setting in and develop this. So what I want to say in short is these are like nothing new. It's already there. We just need to take a different mindset to understand this. What do you think is going to be the future of these technologies? Like, are we going to see like a minority report kind of interface, you know, where people are just interacting with gestures? How, how far is that in the future? Uh, right. So, so if you talk about the zero UI, right, it's basically, as I said, it's an haptic voice. Voice, many knows it. And um, glanceability. <clears throat> You can just look on your phone and unlock it. That's that's got lensability, yeah. and other one is basically like you know how you have a contextual data and play around with that. So having said that, many companies are transforming and going towards it. So one typical example is like without opening a box, I can able to see what is inside it using an AR, mm -hmm. right? And similarly, without uh, literally applying myself a makeup kit using an AR app, I can apply it. So this is the transformation the companies are going in. Let's talk about the future right now. So, so the predictive analysis and predictive thinking is so good, it can able to detect your bank balance, provided you're given this permission, mm. <laughs> and yeah. your calendar, and your company's holiday calendar, and can predict the, the time, which are obviously free because your kids are, don't have school in this time, and look for the chief prices for the flight and book you a ticket and say that you're ready for a vacation. So yeah. that's where the future is, right? So it can able to predict and tell you this could be done without even touch of a human intervention. So it's basically the days are gone that you need to go and look for the data. The right. data will come to you. Right. So can you share, you know, some thoughts on developers today? How, how can they learn and stay updated on, on these technologies? What you work is basically goes with never, you will not able to learn a lot in this case. What you do apart from that is actually shapes you. So when you do, when a company like Publicis Sapient, we are actually able to solve a lot of problems and innovations, things around the digital transformation. We also have a special innovation labs, you know, where different group of people from different industry come to solve for it. So. Um, in this particular case of Publicis Sapient, right, you know, we build this innovation lab where people come with their mindset, solve the problem, build experiences around it. So that actually helps the developers to go forward. Great. Uh, thank you so much, Selva, for this wonderful chat. I'm sure there's lots to learn. So if any of you have any questions on this topic or overall on, on the topic of experience technology, feel free to post in our comment sections below. Uh, Sapien India is available on all social channels, whether it's Facebook, uh, Twitter, Instagram. So do go like and follow us and ensure that you stay constantly updated with all the tech trends on our channel. Thank you. It was great chatting with you.